This is a very special course on global health. Um, we do global health differently than it's probably done anywhere else. That's because we use social theories to frame global health problems and cases so that when you see a complex case and you come across a set of problems that look very difficult to understand, our social theories will frame them for you. That framing that we do, we call, we use the term biosocial. You can't understand health, nor can you be effective in healthcare delivery if you don't understand how the biological and the social interact. And more importantly, I think, for this course is the biosocial complexity through which poor health is distributed. And this gets into health inequalities, health inequities, that we really put our laser focus onto in this course. We're really trying to get at at the realization that a lot of our attempts to control disease and improve health globally is linked to the way we've socially constructed these diseases and the responses to these diseases. And this isn't random. This is the product of history. It's the product of ideology. And we use certain social theories, not in order to fetishize them and say that these are the only ways of understanding uh, the world, but as tools to help us really you know, tear apart certain uh, aspects of the way things have been shaped. That's why we've advanced these, this toolkit of ideas, not because we think that theory is cool, although it is, no doubt. <laughs> it's because we find it useful. What is it that we're adding as anthropologists to our work as physicians? A psychiatrist, an internist who's a tuberculosis expert, another psychiatrist who focuses on eating disorders, and yours truly, an infectious disease physician. All of us are also anthropologists. But the purpose of this, what's at stake for us, is not the theories and not the history. It's using them to actually have an effect in the world, to intervene, to implement, and that's gonna be the focus of what each case is about.